Jonathan, how are you doing? Doing well, man. Thank you so much for having me. No, it's my absolute pleasure. How is it? How's it been in uh, Philadelphia? Today, it's pretty disgusting and gross out. Um, but outside of today's weather in particular, it's a, it's a beautiful time to be alive, um, even though the current situation um, and uh, entrepreneurship should be fun. So excited to dive in a little bit. Mm. Did you? When did you start Penji? Was it during the crow? Was it way before then? Penji started uh, about four and a half, five years or so ago. Uh, okay, so, under the pretense of just uh, of, of trying to solve a problem, um, mm. I think those are the t- the best types of businesses. When you think to yourself, uh, "How can I? How can I fix something? How can I? Um, how can I solve something?" That to me, that's those are the most profitable businesses because you're solving the problem that you once had. Um, and some people that may be listening to this that are you know early stage. They, they might have an idea because they think that it can make a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm telling, going to tell you now that if that is the person that is listening, uh, you need to stop what you're doing right now and, and just put it all to the side because it's not going to work. Uh, I think there might be a small percentage of people that it might work with, but it, it, in theory, it's not, it's not. If you think your idea is going to be profitable and you're doing the business because it's profitable, then I think the need is just is is stupid you'll you'll run out of of gas uh in probably year maybe not year one but you maybe year three year four year five the the problem that we are solving at penji is such a worldwide problem which is trying to find reliable graphic designers for a business right and how can we make that easier and more accessible to people who can't afford a traditional designer right so the average cost of a designer can be forty five thousand to sixty thousand dollars a year. You know, that's a lot of money. That's around five thousand dollars a month for a business, not including benefits and taxes and all the other fun crap. Um, we at Penji are at maximum twelve thousand, thirteen thousand dollars a year. So imagine being able, being able to have a designer on staff that is a fraction of the cost where they might be able to do more for you and they might be able to have a wider skill set in terms of their overall design. And, and that to me as a, as a business owner is what allows me to, to stay up really late at night and wake up really early in the morning in order to solve this problem and, and the, the fire that I had uh, eight years ago on this entrepreneurial journey, it's the same fire, if not more today, because I start to, un- we as a company, we start to unravel, uh, about the actual possibilities of, of what we, what happens when we solve this problem. Mm. Um, and, and that to us is, is worth its weight in you know, more than gold. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing. And like, obviously you made that differentiation between businesses that have, you know, they are like in, in, in theory, they're very profitable businesses, but like when you're actually you know, scaling it, if it doesn't solve that problem, it won't go anywhere. That's just the way, that's the way it is. Like, so that it was, I think like you, you mentioned this before we hit record, but you've had businesses in the past that haven't worked out. Would, would you, you know, attribute it to that? Yeah, well, the businesses that didn't work out, I just think it was the it was trying to solve the wrong problem and find the wrong audience. We were a uh, a digital marketing agency that relied heavily on graphic design, right? So we were a before Penji, we were a SEO, web design, all purpose, uh, digital marketing agency. So web design, web development, um, graphic design, marketing, SEO, all that fun stuff. Um, it didn't work out because the way the market is shifting, right? Like people don't give a crap about custom graph, uh, websites anymore, right? Some do, but like usually businesses with a lot of money, they, they care, they care about it. Um, the one thing, and it also with SEO, SEO is forever changing. People need content and that's always hard to be able to obtain too. So with all that in mind, we we thought to ourselves i remember the specific time where i thought to myself like this is just pointless and stupid it was a it was like our dream client right and it was like man if we were to get this client we're set guys like you know we're going to be eating good we're going to stop eating ramen 
we're going to be able to like actually, you know, afford to hire people, et cetera, et cetera. And we got the client. It was Rutgers University, which is a you know relatively decent sized uh, university in, uh, in, in our area of the world. And uh, I remember getting the client and sitting there in the meeting and, and, and just a feeling of like nothing, you know, because that was just one blip, right? You get the client, right? And you have that client for a whole year. And then who really gives a crap about it? You know, who really actually cares about that you got Rutgers University or, or you know, whatever client? That one client isn't going to bring you other 50 million other clients, uh, it's, it's not, it could bring you one or two, but it's not going to be, you, you, it's never the idea of that one thing, right? It's a culmination of like a million other things that lead you to success. And that's what I wish I learned early on in the very beginning of businesses, because we ended up, uh, firing a lot of people. Unfortunately, uh, we ended up, uh, shutting down that business in order to start Penji because we knew where the market was headed, right? We knew what people needed. People need a very easy solution for their marketing efforts and for their design efforts, for their for their business efforts. Um, people don't want to spend more money than what they have to. Uh, and so that was kind of just the overall feeling is, is the problem that we were solving in the very beginning of our business, although may have been profitable for some people, it wasn't profitable for us and it wasn't a large enough problem. And we just gassed ourselves out. You know, we just got exhausted from going to networking events and cold calling people and cold emailing people yeah. and sending videos to people in order to get a, a meeting. And then, you know, you send a hundred videos to people asking for a meeting and you only get like one response or 10 responses. So it's exhausting. And, and so we decided to package our business up in a subscription model and sell it. Uh, it's a little bit unique because we're one of the few companies that are actually doing it in the world. And, uh, you know, it's been pretty, uh, it's been a pretty good journey right now working with Penji. So uh, it's, uh, it's been an exciting ride. So how did it go from that previous business of, you know, that marketing agency that you, that you spoke of? How did, it, how did it kind of go from that? How did it evolve into Penji? We were having just clients constantly either uh, give us feedback because we, I think feedback was something that was always important to us uh, from the very beginning of Penji. Uh, still to this day, we ask our customers, how do you find out about us? Uh, we ask them, uh, what, what is the overall expectation that you have for setting up? Um, and then if there's an, and if they leave us, we ask them for feedback. So that's been ingrained in our DNA from the beginning and it still is to this day, we asked that customer, we asked that question to our customers back then, and everybody constantly told us uh, that the biggest need for their business was graphic design. And we had the, uh, the ability to, because uh, we had really good graphic designers uh, at the time. So we started putting two and two together, and we said, okay, well, you know, we're, a lot of our clients are saying that we're good at this. Uh, there's a need in the marketplace, potentially. Um, there's a potential need in the marketplace uh, for graphic design. And so we had this like hypothesis is like, you know, all this data that we had clients telling us X um, customers are, are, are saying Y now we need to go out and find, is this actually profitable, right? Can this be a business? So then we took the, the hypothesis and, 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 and asked 150 of our closest friends and we said, Hey, uh, what are your problems for in your business? Uh, da, 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 like maybe 10 or 15 questions. And then at the bottom question was, if we built this, would you buy it? And what this was, was inevitably an early version of what Penji is today. And people said, yes, at the time we were charging $79 a month for graphic design, which is like stupid cheap, right? Like who wouldn't say no to a logo for $79, right? pretty pretty like brainless decision um we're not that anymore so no don't don't be surprised when you go to our website and you don't see that price but um we got the validation from our customers we then got validation from the 150 people that we interviewed yeah. we then got customers from that 150 people and then that just kind of uh started us off uh, with revenue 
Um, and then we just slowly built on top of that foundation of, uh, of, of, of early revenue. Yeah. I think, I think those surveys are massively underrated. Like I've seen so many people just jump into, you know, developments, jump into like starting the, the business without actually doing that research and, and actually, you know, sending out surveys to people that, you know, the ideal customers. I've seen so many people do it. I mean, I, I fell into that trap before, whereas for my business now, we did the exact same thing. Like we were sending out, you know, so, uh, surveys to people before we went to, before we started a new, you know, product line, a new service line, new supply run, new, new features and stuff like that. Um, because you kind of need that. And that, that, that last question that you asked, if we did build this, would you buy it? That's a, that's a, that's a massively, you know, important question. And something that I guess like I've run into is that a lot of people say that they buy it, but when actually like push comes to shove and then when they actually have to buy it, a lot of them might not, you know, convert. So that conversion rate is actually really important as well. So it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, another question that we actually asked was, um, how much would you spend if you were to buy it? And that call that, that, uh, that question was around that price. So we needed revenue, right? It didn't matter what it was. We needed money. Um, and so we were okay with losing money in the first year or two in order to gain a customer base. And that's inevitably what we, what we did. We, we inevitably made revenue, uh, made profit off of that revenue because we just had so many people that wanted to do it, but at the at the cost of seventy nine dollars. I mean, that was just the that was the the launching pad to to what it is today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something else that I think you brought up uh, about your your business in particular, um, and, and most people that may be listening to this today, um, if you're not making decisions backed off of data, then again, shut your business down. Like it doesn't make any sense for you to be in business if you're not making decisions off of data because data doesn't lie. Um, emotions will, you know, I could be emotionally, I can emotionally say something like, you know, I have a feeling that this is going to work, right? Um, I, I have a feeling that this business is going to be profitable. Uh, I have a feeling that we're going to get sales. Well, no, you're not. Uh, assume that and assume that you're not going to as well. Um, assume, assume, um, nothing and just treat everything as factual and uh, if you're able to actually say you know if i give you three dollars what are you going to put those three dollars to if you don't know the answer to that question um then again shut your business down because uh that three dollars that i might invest in you if you can't make six out of it or if you can't make nine out of that three dollars and it's only three dollars then how are you supposed to be able to do it with a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, simple, simple as that. So we, from the early beginning of our business, we started tracking data. You know, we started tracking uh, points in order to for us to learn more about our customers, but also the de buying decisions of our customers, and it, it's mm -hmm. paid off quite well. Uh, we're actually probably too data driven to an, to an extent, um, but with that in mind, that's that's what built our our culture. That's what built our company. Hmm. You spoke about something quite interesting there. It's like if you give me three dollars, how can I make your? You know, how can I make it into six? How can I make it seven, eight? And that, that that's a really important point, especially because when you're starting, you're trying to experiment different ways. I mean, obviously, it's data driven, so you're trying to experiment as to which you know which like what works best, right? You're trying to build that engine of growth. So I guess for you, starting Penji, what sort of experiments did you do? How did you set up those experiments to get to sort of build that engine of growth that you're at now? We, we did, well, we did a lot of advertising at first, like language. We started using languages uh, and verbiage that just, we thought made a lot of sense. Um, it didn't because we didn't interview, like we, we started interviewing customers like why, why did you sign up for Penji, right? And then whatever they said based off of that, we created advertisements based off of that. Um, we started uh, experimenting with phrases. We started experimenting with um, uh, service offerings. We started uh, experimenting with how the customers were serviced as a whole. Um, we experimented on, for us in particular, it's all about the customer experience. So the minute that they sign up for, for Penji, uh, are they able to actually uh, receive a quality experience? And, mm -hmm. and feel confident that they're going to be able to uh, work with the company that that is 
you know, trustworthy. Um, so, I mean, we have analytics on literally everything. We have analytics on our software. We have analytics on our website. Uh, we did a lot of SEO content marketing experiments, uh, which is a lot of uh, our success to this day. Uh, we started doing a lot of uh, experiments on uh, monthly experiments, three, usually three month experiments. Because if you can't do it, in th- if you can't move the needle in three months, then again, you should probably just move on. Um, but we started doing some experiments on SEO, uh, writing a lot of long form content. And, uh, you know, to this day, we, we have uh, hundreds of thousands and you know, millions of people going onto our website in order to read articles and blogs and things like that. And so the, the point of me sharing all of this is like you need to be able to find the driver for your business. If you're an online based business, you need to be able to drive people to your website. You need to be able to have a funnel. Uh, you need to be able to have good SEO or good, uh, uh, a good content marketing as a whole. And then if your sales funnel, if, if, your, if your engine is the website for us, our moneymaker is our website. So I don't, we don't make money off of phone calls. We don't make money off of email. You go to our website and you buy. So if that is your driver, create ways and strategies to send people to that that funnel. Uh, and then once they hit that piece, then you, you hit them with advertising. Um, come back, you know, here's a discount, here's a code, um, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, I, I, I think to kind of round out the answer, you, you really have to, it depends on your business. You have to understand where that, where that funnel is, right? Where, where is that top of funnel? Uh, and then find a way to, to build that, build the business mm-hmm. and, the, and a sales uh, uh, aspect from, from, from there. That's a really great answer. I love that answer so much because you kind of like to summarize, I guess, you, you kind of like, for anyone listening, of course, you, you, you find out what your moneymaker is. And for you, it is driving people to your website. That, that's the core thing. And then you kind of think about all the other things around that. Kind of, how do you drive people to that website? And then you do those three months of experiments that you, that you talked about, right? Like what? what is the best way to spend our money to drive people to this website in order for us to generate revenue? I'd love to talk to you about that three month experiment. Like, what does that look like? I know a lot of people might be interested in, in, you know, doing these experiments. How do those three months experiments work? How do they work? Um, I mean, the, if you want a sexy answer, you're not going to get it. Um, but if you want an honest answer, I'll give it to you. Um, Google sheet. You know, just a Google sheet. I reached out to, um, uh, let's just say you're uh, an online based business, right? You, you get uh, 15 customers, you interview them all, you plot your points. Um, this is what this one said. This is what that one said. Is there, and then look at it. Is there a consistent theme? This is a, under the assumption that you're starting a business 100% brand new. Uh, once you get those data points and you see some consistencies based off of your answers, um, how did they find us? Uh, what did you like? Um, things like that. And then, you know, why, why did you sign up? Well, I signed up because, um, I, I used to hire a graphic designer in the past, but it didn't work out. Okay. Well, where did you hire them from? Well, I hired them from a freelance website. Okay, cool. So now... Uh, you go, you create a piece of article, an article that says uh, 10 ways on how to outsource uh, graphic design, your next graphic designer, or, you know, why you shouldn't, why you shouldn't work with um, X company, right? Hmm. Something like super controversial. Um, and then from there, you just put, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks, thousand dollars or something like that onto, uh, onto the ad and see if you can collect emails. Um, or you, if you want to, if you don't have that type of money, do what, what we did. Uh, we went through our general area in Philadelphia. We put a mile radius of about 30, 30 to 50 miles or so um, around, and we wanted to be the most no, like local, like a local shop. We went to every business. We emailed every business in our area that we thought could be customers. Uh, for us, it was uh, small businesses and digital marketing agencies. Um, hey, this is Penji. This is what we do. Do you have 15 minutes? Uh, we got a lot of people that said no. Um, more people that said no than yes. 
But at least they were aware of Penji. Maybe they clicked mm. on our, our website. Maybe they got retargeted. Um, and then, you know, you just go from there, right? You, you can't tackle the world in one day. Again, if you believe that you could be a billion dollar company, you're stupid. So like, just go right ahead and, and do your local economy. You know, you're in London. So, you know, go to every goddamn brick and mortar business and knock on their door or, or send them a flyer, give them a letter or whatever it may be. Hopefully you can get around like a hundred to 200 customers from that particular data pool, from that, that, that area. And then once you have the revenue, then you start doing some more stuff, right? Then you start like actually putting money in, in advertising and then you go from London and you do, you know, maybe like a hundred miles and then 150 miles. And then you start to do all of the UK or just like all that, those, those countries uh, uh, around there. And then from there you go, okay, well the UK, I mastered the UK. Now I need to be able to go over to uh, the United States because maybe they're just a better, a better fit. Maybe they have a, a little bit more ex uh, expendable income. Who knows? Um, then you do the same thing uh, over there, but just via digital digital marketing. Uh, and so you can kind of see how Penji was able to grow. We have customers in like 70 different countries, right? And and we never marketed ourselves in these countries. Like we don't have um, we don't have a, a base in India, but we have customers there. You know, we don't have a base in in Poland, but we have customers there. Same with France, UK, all that. Like we're not even in these countries when when the aspect in the aspect of our, our marketing. But we're only focused on our marketing inside of of the United States. But other people are finding out about us through our digital marketing efforts. So imagine what Penji can do or your business can do when you actually focus on that new market. Um, sky's the limit. Mm. So is that is that how you grew then? So you went from sort of advertising within Philadelphia, expanded to another city and kind of like expanded your radius like very, very slowly to now, you know, conquering Europe and other continents. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we have advertised in... Uh, in, in England, UK, all that area, but it was moderately successful. Um, we just kind of in the very beginning, we focused primarily on Philadelphia and the 30 to 50 mile radius. We did, we had no budget for advertising. Um, we, we didn't have enough money at the time to do it. So we had to collect our, we had to collect revenue. And then from there, then we started to, you know, amp everything else up from there. Mm. Um, so one, once we you got we the also revenue, have good keywords too, good SEO. It. Once you got that yeah. revenue, you retarget yeah, people are retargeting. That revenue. Yeah. Okay. That's really good. That's amazing. So that's what I really love is that you don't need a huge kind of marketing or advertising budget to be able to grow. You just need an early, you know, those early customers get that money and then you can like retarget it. So when you talk about like creative you have to be ways hungry. to grow and yeah, when you talk about like creative ways to grow, that's, that's an amazing one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you. If you're thinking to yourself like, oh, I don't have enough money to advertise and you're just not working hard enough or you're not working smart enough, um, mm. you can, you're making excuses. Not, I mean, I'm saying you, but like whoever's listening right now, you're making excuses for yourself. Like, oh, if I only had a million dollar budget, I can make it like, no, you can't. If you can't, if you can't make $3 into nine, then how are you going to make a hundred into, into a thousand? It's just not, it's not possible. So you have to you have to understand your audience a little bit better and there's no better way to do it than just a lot of really hard conversations starting a podcast right you know that's a great way to do it i'm sure that's probably to a degree that's why you that's why you did it um how can you get more people mm -hmm. to learn more about your business well you know you have an hour's time of 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 my, many entrepreneurs that might be uh invested in you know uh, a new a new way uh to the new generation or whatever of business cards right um, like that's, you're talking to business people, yeah. right? Uh, you're talking <laughs> to people who need business, uh, who need, need business cards. I don't personally, I don't use business cards cause I don't really care about them, but I'm sure there's hundreds of millions of people that do mm -hmm. care about them. So, yeah. um, there's, there's that. Yeah. I mean, we got just for, just for reference, like we got our first business client from this podcast. So, yeah, and we, we reuse that money to like reach out to other businesses in a similar line of, you know, similar industry to them because we thought, yeah. well, if it fits for her, if it fits for her business in that industry, then maybe there's an industry fit here, which we're learning more about yeah. our product market fit. Right. So we're like sure. putting some money behind, you know, the B2B outreach in that industry. And oh, it was very new. So we're kind of experimenting it right now. 
and hopefully yeah. it will pay off. So like when you talk about creative ways to grow, of course, like that's the same way that I guess like we, we did it as well. Yeah. I mean, also taking into consideration that maybe the business that you, and this is something that you have to be okay with, uh, you know, again, all the people that are listening, uh, just because you have an initial idea for your business, it doesn't mean don't get married to it. Mm, um, you know, like, like just because data, if data says, if data says to you that, uh, nobody cares about business, I'm just using, if it's okay, I'll use your business as an example, but let's just say data, data, um, data comes back and says, nobody cares about business cards anymore and uh gift cards uh for uh retail right um is more profitable because Mm -hmm. maybe you know you scan a code of some kind and you obtain a unique discount when you walk into the store right um like that could be profitable for somebody like uh an h&m or like a zara or like a clothing business Mm. um it might be even it might be good for like a um um a grocery store so maybe you find out through your journey that by talking to people like yeah you want like you want the business world to adopt your 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 idea um but maybe it maybe it's not like for us in penji we thought uh people who did we thought startups would want penji right in the very beginning we're like oh yeah and that's why i started my uh the podcast uh I mean, I don't do it anymore, but I, I started the podcast because I thought startups would want Penji. And so I was like, oh, man, if I can get them in a, an hour phone call uh, in a podcast, I, I could definitely I could definitely get at least one customer out of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and I was wrong. Startups are our worst customers. They're great, you know, if they have the, the capital to do it and the ideas, but when the idea doesn't exist and you're just coming off the top of your head, it, it startups aren't aren't the most ideal customers that work with Penji, believe it or not. So we were wrong. Yeah. And yeah. It's fine. Well, I guess your ideal customers, like I mean, very very simply put, I know maybe some people might disagree with me, but it's the people that buy it, right? Like that's the data. Well, yeah, so, of course. Yeah. yeah. So it's like if if you have in your mind, that's the difference again from what you said before was separating that emotion from the data is like if you have in your mind a very set way of how your business is going to grow and they're not tested, they're just from assumptions, then, you know, like for us, right, we thought it was, again, we thought it was startups and some startups have bought it to be fair, but there were industries that have bought it more than startups than we didn't even think like construction firms and it's like we didn't we didn't think that that was a use case so yep. that's really interesting is that once you experiment you you find out like there's, there's things that come out that you didn't assume and um that's that's always very interesting for me yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah i mean it's you know who knows maybe maybe you find that you know 10 uh, 20 out of a uh, hundred uh, of your customers are construction firms and yeah. you find out that the construction firms are in fact like the, the best types of customers for you. Uh, I'll, I'll bet you a lot of money that if you find that construction companies are the most profitable, I bet you, you probably wouldn't give a shit if a startup were to sign up again. Yeah. Yeah. Just no. Real talk. Yeah, right. No, because no, no, like yeah. money is money is you found your niche. So, you know, once you find it, that's when, that's when the fun begins, because Mm -hmm. now you can really start to, that you can really start to just like take over and come up with some really creative and unique ideas. Uh, You know, now the question isn't like, um, you know, where is my next dollar coming from? The the question is now, um, how am I going to get in front of a hundred, a hundred construction companies? Mm. Uh, and, And that's fun. And you've proven the use case, right? I mean, for you with Penji, like when you were selling to these firms, you've proven the use case. It works for this industry. It works for these sort of clients. So you can you can retarget to that use case to other other similar people in the in the industry to show that it works. Um, retarget, but also retarget, but also um, know what to say. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. if I were to say to them, "Hey, agency so and so, I'd love to be able to reduce your costs." by you know 70 mm-hmm. percent is this something that you're interested in yeah exactly jonathan i loved having you on the podcast we're gonna have to wrap up there because it's been it's been half an hour but yeah it's such it's so amazing talking to you and it's really kind of changed the way i've thought about things especially from a data-driven point of view i do sometimes a big tendency i have is to do i do get wound up by the emotional side of business 
I love sort of like dreaming and um, it is a bit of a downside for a lot of, a lot of young people as well, I think. So getting that data lens is, is so important for the growth and um, knowing what to do, knowing where, if to stop, knowing, you know, how to construct your engine of growth that you mentioned. So yeah, massive, massive pleasure having you on. How can people stay in touch with you and stay in touch with Penji in the meantime? Sure. Yeah. Head over to penji.co, uh, P-E-N-J-I dot C-O. Uh, also, if you use the coupon code MILLPOD15, uh, M-I-L-L-P-O-D-1-5, uh, you'll get 15% off uh, your first month of Penji. Nice one. Well, if, yeah, if anyone's listening, that link, that sorry, that code will be in the description below. Uh, do make use of it. 15% off is a pretty good deal. So thank you so much, Jonathan, and I'll catch you very soon, I'm sure. Thanks so much.